man of the house of Levi went out and married the daughter of Levi. So it's Yelik be Ishma based Levi be Yikak S Bas Levi. Who was that? That was talking about Amram taking his wife back. Guess what the Rashi says? He divorced his wife because he said, listen, Paran, what's going on? They're killing all the babies. How can I logically make children in the world if they say, I mean, we're in the Holocaust here. You're going to have children in the middle of the Holocaust? How can I do such a thing? They're going to kill. So came along his daughter Miriam and said, hey, Abba, you're worse than Paran. Why are you worse than Paran? Because Paran decreed just against the boys. And you're decreeing against the girls and the boys. What's going on here? So he took his wife back. And from that, Actually, Yochevet got her youth back, and Moshe Rabbeinu was born at that point. The Chavetz Chaim brings it, and Rav Chaim Shmuel Levitz both moves. They bring a similar Chazal, similar story. What was the story? Cheskiah was on his deathbed, and the Navi Yirmiyahu came to him and said, Listen, you're going to die. It says, Not only are you going to die, you're going to die, you're not going to live. So the Gemara and Bracha says, what do you mean you're going to die and you're not going to live? Of course if you're going to die, you're not going to live. Oh, the answer is exactly, you're not going to die in this world and you're not going to live in Alamaba. So what's happening? What happening? You know why? Because you don't have any children. Yeah, but he says, listen, I had Ruach HaKodesh and I saw that Manasseh is going to come out of me. It's going to be bad news. So I, I, why should I have children? Better not to have children. I mean, have Rashaim. Isn't it better to have only good people right. in the world? Let's stop the bad people from coming into the world. So... So, uh, so the Gemara says, what do you have to do with the secrets of Hashem? You have to do what you're commanded to do. You have a mitzvah poravu. So you have to do what you have to do. What do you care what's going to come out? That's not your business. So the Chavetz Chaim says on that, that you see that a man only sees with his eyes. And he can't see far. He can only see what you see. You only see the edge. You, only, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. It's not your business. Right. But the, uh, and, and not only that, the Nefesh Chaim says, Gevotik. He says like this, on the same thing, the same idea. He says, Ki rosh. It is something way, way beyond. Sagos, beyond any of our concepts. We can't understand really what the Torah is about. Ki adam. The purpose of the mitzvahs was never revealed to any, has never been revealed to man. Even Moshe Rabbeinu. He says, only one man, Adam Arisha. <laughs> Adam Arisha was able to see from one end of the universe to the other, and that means he understood all the purpose of the missiles. But a regular man, no. It's completely above our heads. How can you possibly, if the Torah said, do it, do it. That's it. You, you can't start making cheshbonos, I'm going to have bad children, I'm going to have good children, I'm going to have no children. You can't start making these cheshbonos. Now listen to this. With Chaim Shmuel Levitch takes it one step further, and he has the kasha. He says, wait a second, what did this guy do? He was about to an asset. He didn't want to do the mitzvah poor food. He, he died because of that? Where did, where did he get the death penalty? Where did the death penalty come into play here? Why should he die? Okay, he didn't want to do a mitzvah. He didn't want to, because of that, he has to die? So he says, Gavotek. He says like this. He says, it wasn't just that he didn't want to do a mitzvah. He was, he uprooted a basic you sold in the Torah, which was the relationship of a servant and a master. A servant and a master. We're, Hashem is the master. Hashem says, do you do. You don't say, well, yeah, I'm going to do it. According to my logic, according to this, I'm not going to do it. If Hashem says, do it, do it. That's why it was Chai of Misa, because we uprooted the relationship between him and Hashem. Hashem told him to have children, and he said, no. A total rebellion. He did it dafka because of his life. In other words, he used his own cheshbon as if according to his cheshbon, this mitzvah shouldn't do we see many times. So, and we see we see this all over the Torah. This happened. Where did this happen? We saw, we know what happened to Shaul Melech. Hashem told him to kill to kill everybody. But Korah, we see, we see it. We see it all over the place. Shlomo Melech had too many wives. He used the logic. All these people were punished because they used the logic as, as compared to just doing the pure rats on Hashem, whatever Hashem says. So he brings it. Chaim Shmuel Levish brings a midrash. And the Midrash, the famous thing, this one happens to be also in this week's Parsha. All three of these things that are bringing in the Parsha. So, um, and this, he says a story about Yitro. Yitro agreed to give his daughter to Moshe Rabbeinu on one condition. The Midrash says, you're not going to believe this. On the condition that the firstborn is going to be a priest to idol worship. I'll give you my daughter, but I want that firstborn kid to be a priest to idol worship. And Moshe says, okay, he agrees. What's going on? The whole point, well, Yitro, we know, what, what happened there by the well with Moshe Rabbeinu? Moshe Rabbeinu, he saved the daughters of Yitro. What was the problem? They wanted to kill the daughters of, uh, of Yitro because, because he just rejected all their idol worship. He says, listen, this is enough. I don't want to be a priest. to give back all his stuff. And that's it. They, and they, they put him into Karen. And they were, they, he, he was, they were going to beat up his daughters. And they said, maybe they're going to rape the daughters there. And, he, and Moshe Rabbeinu... He came, had already yeah, given up. He already given up. Before, before, before Moshe Rabbeinu came yeah, yeah, he already gave it up. He gave it up. And he doesn't want it anymore. So, so, so it was just fear. Oh, and I want the first... I'll give you my daughter, I want the firstborn to be a priest of Odazar. What's happening? 
Yeah, so, 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 yeah right. It's a stira. Right, so the right. answer that they give is, listen, yeah, what, how, what's the story idea. with Yitro? Yitro was a guy who did a sense of bringing every kind of voters that existed in the world. He did it until he came to the Ratzon Hashem. He converted. He used, he went through all the cash bonus, and he says, this is no good, this is no good, and this is no good. But he, he wanted to make sure that the son was not going to be an FFB, from from birth. Or maybe you can also call it from from border. He wanted to make sure that this kid did the rats and Hashem because he did the rats and Hashem because he, he wanted to, to do the rats and Hashem. I don't teach your kids to make it. Right, right. They have to make it on their own. They have to do it on their own. They have to come to the, because the other level is the higher level. There's only one problem with that. The, the Balator says that really Moshe Rabbeinu didn't really agree to this. He only agreed on the tonight that he was going to figure out how to way to appease and he'll figure out as time goes by. Okay, he doesn't have to go to a Vodazar. So Moshe Rabbeinu did agree. Because really, you know why? Because Moshe Rabbeinu held, very, it's a very nice far that you really have to do things from your understanding, from you, it has to come 100%. But really, the higher level is not like that. The higher level is you do it just because Hashem said it. So even though on one side the Baal Tshuva, he comes and he comes with a tremendous six levels and he's all excited and he does things because he understands that it's the right thing. There is a certain tamimus of the person who, was, who grew, grew up through him, who does things just because his father taught him to do it, that's certain that's a higher level. And that's a famous Tehillim that we know. There's a famous Tehillim that says, Adam v'behema toshi Hashem. Man and beast is the one that you're going to save. Hashem is going to save. What's the, what's the, uh, the, the Gemara tell us? What does that mean? The Gemara coolly says that anybody who serves a god like an animal, like a beast, like a behemoth, a domesticated animal, I would say, anyone who serves God like that way, he's the one that's going to be saved. Now, what does that mean? That means, the Rashi explains, the, the, the Gemara, and there's also the Rashi, that the person who makes himself humble, who serves Hashem in the sense he just Hashem says do and he does, and he bring, there's a Gemara actually in Kedushin that says that Mashicha by pulling an animal, that there's a, there's a svara there that says that just by calling the animal that's called Mashicha because an animal when you call it it comes, he said like, come on let's go, and a person is not like that a person says oh maybe I should come I shouldn't come I make fresh bonus all these different ways that is not the right way. The right way, that, and, and not only that, he wants, it's a higher level. The highest level is that you just do it because Hashem said it. That's why we do it. We don't do it for other reasons. Now, there's plenty of stories here about... Uh, one, one story that comes to mind is the, the Chafetz Chaim. One time there was a... Uh, there was a, an Avrech. Uh, he had no money. And the kids in the neighborhood, the wife sees the kids of the, of the neighbors. They got new shoes and they got new clothes. And she's fetching to her husband, what's going on? You know, here, you're very nice, you're sitting and you're learning and everything. But look, at least, what are we going to tell our kids? So he went to the Chavetz Chaim, and he says, what am I supposed to tell the kids? You know, the neighbor's kids have new shoes, and they have new cars, and new who knows what, all the Gashmias. He says, listen, tell them, for this you were created. You were created for this. Forget about the new shoes and the new thing. You are doing what you're created to do. Ah, it doesn't look good, it doesn't come out good, it doesn't come out 100%. I don't understand why all these things are happening. It has nothing to do with nothing. And the Midrash said that um, somebody wanted to know, he prayed that he wanted to know the language of the bird. Okay, the language of the bird. So he's praying and all of a sudden he can, hears the birds. And the birds are saying, hey, you know what? This guy's cow is going to die. So he runs over to the guy and says, listen, take care of your cow. You know, I have a thing, he's not feeling good. He takes care of the cow and the cow lives. A couple of days later, he hears the birds talking. It's the same guy. His house is going to fall down. He goes to his friend. Listen, no, go fix up your house. It's part of the wall here. You got to check it out. Fix it up. He fixes it up. Three days later, he, gets, he sees the neighbor died. What happened? Oh, <laughs> the, neighbor, talk about that. <laughs> the neighbor died. <laughs> the neighbor died. He said, "Listen, don't get involved with Hashem Cheshbonos." You know, Hashem wants to kill the guy's cow. He would have killed the cow. The guy would have lived. He would have knocked down the house. See, what you it has nothing to do with you. You have to do it. And that's exactly, that's exactly the story, story what, well, what happened with Cheskiyal and also, and also Amram. Forget about whether the, what's, what's going to happen with the children, the children are going to die, or the children are going to come out to bed. That's not your cheshbon. You have to do rats on Hashem. It has nothing to do with you. And what's coming out, it looks bad, and that is exactly interesting enough how the Parsha ends. What, what happens? Hashem sent Moshe Rabbeinu to speak to power. Speak to power, we're going to save the Jewish people. Go over there and speak to them. Next thing you know is Moshe Rabbeinu, he gets over there, they start taking away all the straw, they're, they're bringing, you know what I mean, they're, wiping, they're, they're beating the Jewish people even more. Moshe says to Hashem, why have you harmed these people? Why did you send me? Why did you, why did you send me? 
You send me and everything they're getting messed up. So what's the answer? The answer, Hashem says, now you will see what I shall do to Paro. So the Rashi can make a deal with you. Now you're going to see what I do to Paro, but you're not going to see what I do to the seven kings when we go into Hashem Surah. You're not going to live to see that. In other words, he says, it's not your business whether I send you what comes out good, whether it comes out bad. It's not your business if you're going to sit and learn whether you have poverty. You know, most people leave, unfortunately, they leave religion because they just can't handle the, the poverty. They just can't handle the suffering. They say, what, what kind of life is this? The answer is, is a life of Ratzon Hashem. You have to do what Hashem tells you. It's not your cheshbon, whether you're going to be rich, whether you're going to be poor. We know that's all decided at the time that the, the, the Hashem takes the little drop, in, I mean the angel takes the drop in front of Hashem. Whether you're smart, whether you're poor, that's nothing to do with you. What's going to come out, the totzot, is it's not your cheshbon. And also we know that the, 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 the Rev Shach, right, there's a letter, there's a famous letter that Rev Shach wrote to his Rebbe. Rev, this was Almond Meltzer. He wrote to him, he says, the Matzav here is unbearable. I mean, we're, we're, they were still in Europe and he was in Eretz Yisrael. It's unbearable. We have no money. We want to move the yeshiva. He says, it must be, Rev Shach says, it must be there's a gazera that we're supposed to learn in poverty. That's what it is. It is what it is. The point is, you have to serve Hashem with a pure heart. Whatever Hashem says, you do. What comes out, whether it's good, whether it's bad, it's not your cheshbon. It's nothing to do with you. And that's the mistake that many, many Greek people have made, and we should end up.